So we are um, on this journey to learn to grow and probably you're getting one of the most condensed <laughs> and summarized uh, discipleship training that you ever have and probably anyone that's out there <clears throat> because it's an impartation of the fruit and what he did in my life in all these years and you are welcome to sit at a table and eat of it and this time I want to talk about what if you make mistakes what about f the fear of uh, making mistakes I was uh, telling you about the way I uh, came to the Lord um, I started against all odds all theologies and doctrines and things that were there uh, see I'm, I, I didn't come necessarily as a continuation of the evangelicals and the Baptists and but uh, it came uh, very radical it's something brand new uh, treading on paths that were not there before so um, how <laughs> how do you walk on this type of path how, how, how do you know it's the right thing mm, I was um, discipling working with someone that really came from deep deep um, uh, uh, religion uh, darkness um, really far from God and came into the Lord and <laughs> after about a year of uh, working together on this so Christ can be formed in that soul um, these questions came to his mind it's like hey um, are you doing the right thing is this in a scripture <laughs> um, so it's like all these little doubts you know popping up and lots of times the the Holy Spirit is working in us in a very specific way see especially the the first five books I mean that's probably the most intense work of God with Israel and I mean you read about Moses that he ran to um, um, some st strangers and he got married got two kids a smart father-in-law and 40 years have passed it's like what what did he eat how did he adjust to those I mean he was raised you know Jewish and then he was raised by the Pharaoh's daughter and how did he raise his kids um, what was he dreaming in the night was was God preparing him for the burning bush experience how was God prepared what happened there 40 years so, <laughs> it's like one day he goes there and it's boom <laughs> God comes to Abram and then 10 years later comes no no I'll do this and then 14 years later it's like I'm ready are you ready <laughs> what about every day what about every week I mean, 24 hours what what are these people thinking what's happening <laughs> so the the walking with the Holy Spirit it's on one side the growth of the seed on the inside the Word of God is growing inside and on the other side is dealing with all the old stuff <laughs> lots of old stuff so one, one thing I noticed um, and you can tell the age of uh, the people are trying to get into this realm of walking with the Lord knowing God and you know we our soul tries to find some patterns 
how is God answering my prayers, right? And try to follow those patterns. And then it's like, no, I'm good. I'm cool. I, no, I think I, I'm walking with the Lord. The Lord is talking to me. So, and the only time you hear from those people is in when those patterns don't work. <laughs> when the healing doesn't happen. And realize that they really thought they got it figured out. You know? Some people work better with that. I, I remember um, um, talking to my wife, to Donna, and she really loved the Word of Faith, especially Ken Hagen. It's like, you know, he gives me in the one, two, three. When you speak, or Michael, it's like, man, I have to really get it digested. It takes a long time to even grasp what they're talking about. But you know, Kenny Hagen says, one, two, three, open your mouth, start speaking this, and here is speaking in tongues. Now, not a huge mystery, right? <laughs> um, so some of us um, work better that way, but I want to tell you, as you really get closer and you really start getting more of his life, in you it's gonna make less and less sense <laughs> it's gonna surprise you it's gonna break patterns it's gonna move away from patterns it's not gonna be how you thought you understand it's gonna really um, make you let go of things of your own understanding of the patterns you form, even good ones. <laughs> it's pursuing the infinite <laughs> and trying to comprehend that in the f um, some kind of a limited time space walking with your soul and body. And... But this challenge is so wonderful. And I know I'm talking to this audience that's not going to limit the Holy One of Israel. It's going to say, well, my experience was this, and that person that I learned from said this, and it's not happening, and this is it. I'm hoping you are not stuck in that place. I remember um, asking asking the Lord why he healed blindness and blind people in in several ways you know, four or five ways and um, I thought it's like man it's so deep he saw deep curses and stuff and um, basically his answer was so I can show you there is no pattern I am it's the only thing that matters. I am the light. I am is what matters. <laughs> right? So I had a couple of you know beginning thoughts. The the way I approach this and I want to impart it to you because I I started that way. One is um it's a type of faith and boldness it's that courageous in spite of you being introvert timid or something it's you and God and sometimes this is it this is your moment go and get that um, person from the wheelchair get him up <laughs> you know some sometimes it's like the risk taker which is him Right, that's that means some something is growing there, right? Um, and he he was showing me that unless I get my boat off the shore, so I pick the anchor out, then he cannot move and drive and uh, lead my boat, right? Because it's right there. So I'm trying, Lord, show me, Lord, how. And sometimes it's like, hey, just let it go. Then I'll direct you. 
Right? That's this is something I I didn't know in the beginning, but I learned from you know for the first years. Okay. The second thing, and these are the two initial thoughts. I want you to remember this: you have to be accountable for what you're doing. Okay, don't get in the clouds. It's like, man, I'm the only one. I, it's, I got it. That's nobody understands me. No. <laughs> Be able and ready to correct the trajectory if it gets a little bit off. Okay. Repent if you make a mistake. Maybe found someone that you can be accountable to. Right? It's it's gonna adjust things. It's gonna be maybe a soul that's not like your soul. So you want someone to be exact like you, you know, like this twin soul brother sisters, and you know, no, it's even it's the Lord. <laughs> you submit to the Lord, and it's gonna it's gonna adjust lots of this stuff. Be ready to receive correction. Uh, don't don't get offended. You are on this journey for something so much bigger than your little personality, your little pride, your little place in the history. You are after himself, God himself, after Jesus. <laughs> Can you step over that little word that somebody said about you? Come on. Get real. <laughs> Thought, told you it's kind of a discipleship. <laughs> so, as you begin in this supernatural, divine, walking with this supernatural with God that's totally different than anything that you could think, right? There are three things that are extremely important, right? One is the revelation where you hear and see in the Spirit. Um, lots of it, for me at least, came from um, reading the Word of God, reading the Bible. Now, I, I memorized, I was with the, I don't know if you guys know about the Navigators, and uh, that's like all kind of um, methods of studying, reading the Bible, learning, and a, a bunch of seeds, right? They were, they were not powerful as I was hearing them because I didn't know, I couldn't see them as God, as the Word Himself, right? They were knowledge. But I, I loved them, I planted them. So lots of the revelation, the way I started, I started with from the word. I loved Ezekiel. You wanna you wanna inc increase in the visions? Just read Ezekiel one. <laughs> Just close your eyes, start seeing those beings with wheels <laughs> and eyes all over them. It's like that's the word of that's from the word of God. That's that's some some uh, beings, some cherubs. Um, that were carrying the presence of God, right? The glory of God, it says. Just keep reading that. Keep re Read that before you go to sleep. <laughs> Let that cleanse imagination by the blood of Jesus. Let it start seeing there, right? I, I, don't, I don't think the, um, that seeing... Um, and hearing, it's a big problem, at least for the ones listening here, right? When I started, since I didn't have um, mentorship or oversight, it's just kind of like, okay, Lord, you teach me. Um, I was so afraid of mistakes, right? I, I saw lots of uh, prophetic in the Pentecostal movement or so, so it's like, man, this is... Lord, I, I never want to become like that. <laughs> Man, they would they would read your driver's license and all this stuff. And but with my heart was not with them. I said, Lord, I want, I want the real things. And you know, not not this type of 
things, but I want the real things. I, I want to learn how you see, how you know. But that fear of hearing wrongly or seeing wrongly was with me as I was stepping in. So I had to check with the people, hey, did, does it make sense to you? Is this what you're seeing? And it's not, it's not wrong to do that. But the revelation, most of the part, most, most of the times, it's there. Some of you have lots of dreams. Some of you close your eyes and see in the spirit. Some of you pray in tongues a long time and that absolutely generates all these visions and you hear the words of God. It translates what you are hearing. So I'm, I'm speaking with some, uh, most of you that I know you are mature in this hearing the revelation but here comes the second one and I think this is a big one and that is interpretation and um, lots of times I'm thinking if I would go and hear a prophet or um, somebody has a vision or something just just give me that don't don't tell me what you think about it <laughs> right so just think about this interpretation is the compiler now the ones that know a little bit about computers will say oh yeah so the compiler basically takes something that's written in zeros and ones in the machine language okay so when you push a letter on the keyboard x that sends a string of zeros and ones right and there is an interpretation that brings on the screen and shows little x it's like oh i typed x <laughs> and other other type of translations and interpretations now what do you think interprets the revelation whatever you see the dreams and visions what do you think it interprets in something that's useful for your mind for well something in your soul right so <laughs> um, you know that's that's so important to know and um, what the word says, what the word is, what the word is is what the word does. It's it's so clear path, but not for a complicated mind that's really has all kind of weeds and thorns and stuff in the feelings and bad experiences and pain from the body that scream at you. And things that you see there right so interpretation is a place where the enemy really can or the old man or the flash or it can really take take you off the trajectory of the word right even if you read in the scripture and it's so <laughs> white and black black why but it's so clear your interpretation what, what do you think there are so many denominations it's from the same bible no no not the translations it's from the same bible right i i, I remember when i was listening first time um every at uh, this denomination pre-legalistic and every single time when they would counsel the young people, the single, they would use that verse um, that Paul said to the single people that in, uh, if you are burning, you better get married. Now, and that's the only reason that was preached in all the weddings and all the counseling. Hey, are you burning? Is is like your flesh? You keep thinking about that. Get married quick. I mean, it's, it's in the Bible. We have so many doctrines and denominations and understandings. So some people say, let's get back to the written word, right? 
Well, written word explained by what compiler? <laughs> what interprets that? And uh, Paul says something very interesting, 1 Corinthians 2. He says that we will speak. You know, the Holy Spirit is given to us to know what we have in the Lord. So now we speak of these spiritual revelations with words learned from the Holy Spirit. So it's like, oh my gosh. So the interpretation is done by the Spirit. Not just the revelation and then do whatever you want with that. This is the part that takes the longest time to be formed and changed right that's where he is working and discipling your soul N not so you can have some revelations like you know people that fast so they can hear the voice of god more clearly that's okay but i'm telling you the fast is changing your Compiler, it's changing you. <laughs> Not the amount of revelations, it's what you do with them. How, how do you take them? <laughs> this is, a, I would say, the, the, the toughest thing. I remember I was looking at the compilers and we're praying for, the, for our kids and my family and my wife. And... I realize that we have different compilers, so we read the same verse, the same promise from the Bible. And um, the way she interprets and receives it is through that uh, way of looking at it. And it's like, how did you hear that? I didn't hear this. And I'm coming with this compiler, this interpretation. It's like, that's what I heard, right? Now, this is so important, okay? Because when we talk about one mind and one accord, we talk about one interpretation, one compiler, okay? And this is where from the Holy Spirit, from the one in the Spirit, He's transforming us to come to see the same okay it's not an interpretation of the mind is not of the tradition is not what we think that's good or bad right it's not from the tree of knowledge it's from the holy spirit the same one that gives revelation gives interpretation right daniel knew this in the old testament right the same one okay and then the third one is the application now this is like, what are the next steps? Okay, so, so here it is. I see Jesus on the cross. That word, by his stripes I'm healed. And it's so clear. And my faith is really through the roof. Yes, thank you, Lord. The pain is not going away. What do I do next? <laughs> emergency room <laughs> Tylenol um, stand on the word fast scream of pain but stand what are the next steps right and I would say that this is um, uh, this is a place where I had to grow the most because of these practical common sense applications i thought i, I always spiritualize them right um, it's like lord just speak to someone to find a place of work for me and a job and they would call me and it's going to be in my email by tomorrow morning at eight i haven't i haven't put any applications I haven't filled out any forms. And while the miraculous absolutely can happen, and it happens lots of times, if He gives you that revelation and you have the faith that you will get the job, 
sometimes the practical steps, the application are to apply for the job. Right? <laughs> so we start from the spirit, but we have to let the spirit take us even in the application. You know. So I notice that that's lots of times I go back into I should pray more or I should preach more. Why why did I take so much to preach or the, why did I say this? I kind of overjudge what I did and I realize that's because I received the message from the Lord. I knew that he wants me to speak about that. And in that circumstance, he absolutely was with me as I delivered that. But then, there was one thing I didn't ask him. Or I didn't know I should receive. Should I go for more than 20 minutes? What do you think, Lord? So if, if I'm in the spirit, I want to flow in it's the 21st minute. Is it okay if I just stop and say, Amen. God bless you. That's the application part. <laughs> it has to be from the spirit also. Right? Um, <laughs> I, I noticed this um, praying for people, right? And having visions for people and really encouraging them. But then at the application part, I give them what I thought it's good. And I thought it fits for my place, my walk with the Lord. I said, you should do this or you shouldn't do that. Because that's where the Lord led me to be, right? And the Lord says, no, I'll give you the application for that person too. And one of the things, just to give an example, that he, he taught me as an application is you have to connect to the person where the person is in their faith. Right? If their person in the faith is... I believe that you will come and you'll anoint me with oil and I'll be good. Like that woman, it's like, I'm going to touch his clothes and I'll be healed. That's what she thought, right? Could, could Jesus have healed her by far? Yes. Could she be healed in her house? Absolutely. But that's what she set her mind. And Jesus met her when she touched the robe. You see? So he gave me this, hey, you connect to the people where they are. And if the next step is call the doctor, the next step is stop taking the pills. The next step is, um, you know, I want you to go and meet with that person and have to pray with that lady or with that person, that brother, that son. Or I want you to get the counsel from there because I know there is something practical, something important that you have to hear through that vessel. Yeah, It doesn't mean that you, you got it all. No, you don't. So learning the application part and being open to see that. You know? I mean, sometimes the application is... It's, it's Jesus' faith, it's operating through me now, and I'm going to rebuke the sickness and heal this person now. Done. That's the application. That's what I'm going to do. Okay? Is this every single time? No. So, you learn. <laughs> Told you it's going to be very quick, very deep, um, kind of strict discipleship. But this is important, okay? 
your goal is Christ. It's Him formed in you, and He is relentless. And Holy Spirit is relentless in your life and will achieve that. Okay? Don't, don't stumble into lesser things. Okay? And keep going and be ready to be, be teachable, be ready to be corrected and learn revelation, <laughs> interpretation, and application. It's good, isn't it? Bless you.